All right, Joe here. Welcome back to We Need to Talk. This is the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. Don't worry, we're back to normal format. No more FIFA pack openings. We heard you. Anyway, over the past seven days, we've seen Steve Bruce go 100% Steve Bruce when raging at Alan San Maximan. Me totally lose my head when Scott McSauce banged against Arsenal. And Spurs take it from everybody after losing 7-2 at home to Bayern. Kyle. State of you. What the f is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's a waste of printer But this week we need to talk about Lamina Diabe for Digger. If you already knew who Lamina is, you're either a league and obsessive who quite frankly needs to get more sunlight, you play an awful lot of football manager, or you're just lying. And I put my house. It's the third one. So let me introduce you to Big LDF with the hair of Marouane Fellaini and the swimming trunks of a Love Island contestant. Stay to this bloke. Anyway, he is an 18-year-old product of the Nice Academy who, by the way, produced Hugo Lloris. Was it just me who thought he'd come through the Lyon Academy? Don't know, but apparently they did. He's also played for France at every single level, from under 16 to under 18. He's one of the brightest talents they've got, and he even got his first pro contract and first appearances last season, aged just 17 for the first team. Now, an ankle injury has hampered his progression somewhat, but I can hear what you're thinking at home. Hear what you're thinking, hear what you're saying at home. You're saying, you know, this looks like a talented young player. He could be breaking through the ranks, sold in the future for an awful lot of money. No, forget it all. No, careers down the pan. Because this week, he stole Kasper Dolberg's 70,000 euro watch. So let's talk about the robbery. How did it take place? When did it take place? Why did it take place? We've got to rewind the clock back to September the 16th, the day of the incident, all the players reported for training as they usually would. Kasper Dolberg got changed, put his 70,000 euro watch in his locker. By the way, who wears a 70,000 euro watch to training? Nevertheless, went out to training, came back from training, and it was gone. Now he immediately raised it in the dressing room, said, who's nicked me bloody watch? Nobody said anything. He said, I'm gonna go higher. Somebody better own up. Nobody said anything. He went to the club. He said, somebody's nicked me bloody watch. 70,000 euros that bad boy cost. They went, don't care, Casper. Well, they didn't say that. They just said, we're not taking it any further. We're not going to do any investigations into this, or at least that's what AS were claiming. So Dolberg himself was eventually forced to go to the police, who took the matter rather more seriously than his teammates and the club, and obviously, very quickly, found the culprit, who was, of course, Lamina Diabe. Upon the police revealing who the thief was, Nice quickly opened disciplinary proceedings, at which stage Lamina Diabe admitted that he'd actually stolen the €70,000 watch, forcing Nice to cancel his contract immediately, therefore sacking him. Patrick Vieira and the club also released a little statement online. They said, beyond any sporting and financial considerations, OGC Nice cannot afford to accept such behaviour and to ignore such a fault. It's about his credibility, about the trust that unites his employees, more broadly, all the members of the Red and Black family. Now, Diaby took quickly to Twitter, was not messing about, to admit that he did indeed steal the watch, claiming he had been mentally affected by that injury we spoke about earlier, and releasing a statement saying that he was jealous of him, the aura of Kasper Dolberg drove it to him. And basically, instead of trying to battle him on the pitch and provide him with competition, he just reacted pretty stupidly. He said, look, I'm only 18, he hasn't blamed his age, and he's, of course, out on his ass. But not for long, don't worry. If there's a club that need a player, it's Paris FC, and they wasted no time. Less than a week gone, 
Bang! Lamina straight through the door of Paris FC. Bottom of League Two on two points. Desperate for a player. And to be totally fair to Lamina, if Cochrane can find a club after being a hooligan in Russia, then there should be no problems with you. Already back in the game. Right, we're going to make a quick pit stop for Timu time this week. Not going to spend too long on it because it's, it's really humiliating this time because Timu Puki has been linked with a January move to Manchester United, which I don't know is my worst nightmare or potentially just could be incredible. <laughs> I mean, he is 29. Stinks of a Galo from a few years ago when Louis van Gaal was willing to pay about 50 million for him. But would I take him? No, that's simple fact, absolutely wouldn't. Absolutely wouldn't take Timu Puki at Man United. We're going to finish with the good, the bad and the ugly. The good involves Arsenal. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I, I just love the shit-towsery from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang calling out his former CEO, of course, Hans Joachim Watzke, um, the Dortmund CEO, who basically gave an interview to a German media publication this week saying that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who plays great at Arsenal, compliment in there will probably be warm-hearted when he looks at his bank account but on Wednesdays he'll be saddened obviously through the Champions League because Pierre's playing in the Europa League well Pierre and Aubameyang slapped him back saying better for you I never talk about why I really left Dortmund amidst the Vatska you clown I remember that time you said you were never gonna sell Usman then you saw more than 100 million you were first to take the money I just love it this is good stuff a public shitowsery between former employees. Absolutely superb. Moving on to the bad, and this one's actually a job advert that was posted on Indeed by a, what appears to be, a League One club. So not a bad level, fourth tier in England, on the hunt for a physical striker. Not great, um, but they've posted an advert via DB Sports Agency, or have allegedly posted an advert by DB Sports Agency. 50 to 70,000 pounds per year. They're looking for a striker who has a minimum level of championship experience, that is a physical presence and can play up front. Genuinely, this seems like it's true. Now, the specific club hasn't been listed, but the rumored clubs involve Bolton, who obviously are still hunting for a fair few players, and Portsmouth. Either way, if this is true, and they've actually gone to Indeed to advertise, it's a new low. It really is a new low. I mean, Hamill loves his LinkedIn, but Indeed... <sighs> Moving on to the ugly. Now, I wasn't here last week when we would have definitely covered this, but Richard Keogh is obviously the ugly. If you don't know about what happened to Richard Keogh, Mason Bennett and Tom Lawrence, type it into Twitter and just give it a read because it is crazy. But anyway, Richard Keogh has been confirmed as a 15 month injury layoff following that horrific car crash. Whereas Mason Bennett and Tom Lawrence were in the Derby squad this week, which is just crazy. Tom Lawrence has been called up to the Wales squad. Um, either way, you've got to do some research on this story. Type it into Twitter. It's crazy. So that's it for this week's episode of We Need to Talk. Let us know what we should be covering next week. Just tweet me your ideas, your stories. Send in your Timu times as well. Thanks very much for watching. If you want more serious chat, of course, go and watch Continental Club over on Euro Football Daily. Way more seriousness. Thanks very much for watching. Alfie Desen.